What about reaching out to influencers? So the person asked here about reaching somebody that they really feel like they would have a connection with, um, you know, maybe professional uh, benefit for each other. Somebody who has a way bigger audience than they do, not like a celebrity that, you know, but somebody that they who might write back. Um, not that's not a you know household name yet but way bigger audience. And it feels the person who is wanting to reach out to that influencer, it feels a bit of like, like a cold call, right? Yeah, I, I get it because that person doesn't know you yet. And so I want to speak to this because over the past um, couple of years, uh, as my audience has grown, I'm, I'm not a <laughs> celebrity by any means, but I have certainly gotten more and more cold emails, cold emails, direct messages, cold um, Facebook messages and, and things like that, people who want to connect with me. And, you know, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, email, uh, et cetera. And I'll speak from my perspective as somebody who feels like they need to take, I feel like I need to keep my time very tight and keep my connections um pretty tight as well, because I don't want to give the impression, I'm still learning how to do this, I don't want to give the impression that, hey, I'm just sitting around all day posting content, and you're welcome to just ask me whatever, because I had nothing better to do. Oh, you got a question? Let me spend half hour answering the question, you know, who's, who's, who's got the time? I don't even want to spend five minutes, not even three minutes answering a question from a random person, Right, and I'm I'm developing templates over time on how to be gentle about it, and uh, to say, buy a course from me essentially, and come to a Q and A call. And that's how I that's how I do it these days. So, uh, here's so I'm thinking about the person who's wanting to reach out to this influencer, and what should they say? Should they reach out, uh, and and what should they say? Uh, here's my perspective from from the little micro influencer side of things who is very busy and good, good use of, you know, good time manager. So you might say I manage my time as well as a larger influencer might. Okay. So, so if you were just to message me and say, Oh, George, I connect so much with your content. Maybe here's why um, maybe we could be friends. Do you want to get, do you want to do a zoom call? I'll be like, you're, you're being too forward. Why should I give you any time? Why should I why should, why should I give you any time other than just having read your message and not clicking spam either? Now, why? Well, man, oh, George, I was so nice. I, I said very specific things about why your thing and my thing could relate. And I'm like, but still, I could do that with Ed. I get, you know, three of those messages a week. If I did that to all three people, you could say, well, George, maybe the universe wants you to do that. <laughs> okay, but I... I'm reaching, I'm the one reaching out to other people to say, hey, do you want to get in? Oftentimes people say yes. So, so uh, no, don't reach out to influencers cold to say, can we hang out or, or can we talk even, even through messaging? Because they don't, they don't have time for us. I don't have time for you. You don't have time for others to do that to you, right? Like in the beginning, it's true. When you just want clients, when you just want any interaction, I get it because I was there for many years. Someone messaged me. They want to be friends? Sure, you're my best friend now because no one else messages me. You know, it's like I get one of these every three months and, and that's fine. But once you start getting more and more, you're like, okay, I have to find a strategy to, to do this. So that's all the influencers you're, you're wanting to reach out to. They're just imagining it's, good, it's a good um, exercise to say, what if they got three of those a day? Just as thoughtful as, as yours, just as serendipitous. And oh my God, what a synchronicity that we have this in common. Imagine them getting three of those a day. How would you like them to respond? Do you think you're gonna, they're going to get on a Zoom call with, with all three people a day? You know, that's a good exercise because you go, mm, no, no, that doesn't make any sense. Instead, here's what, I, here's what I like. First of all, I do like it when people share my stuff, right? So like on Instagram, it's easy because you could, you could, you could share someone's Instagram post as a story and it's not too intrusive to your followers because only your most dedicated followers see your Instagram stories. Same thing with Facebook stories, right? Posting on stories is a lot less intrusive to your audience than making a normal post, a normal post in the Instagram grid or, you know, timeline on Facebook. 
stories is only for the only the biggest fans will see your stories. Okay, that's how it's been designed. So sharing on stories is is like a is a it's it's in such a very low cost way of saying hi to an influencer. So I, I get people doing that to me all the time now. I get, thankfully, I get yeah, at least, you know, um, one or two of them a day and people share. And here's the key. When you share someone's Instagram post, you have to at mention or target them or uh, no, at mention them, uh, tag them, sorry, not target, tag them. And what happens is that influencer will get a private message request. It's a message request, but most of us, influ at least me, um, most micro influence people who are not celebrities yet with, you know, even celebrities with teams, uh, they have, they have teams that check the message requests because there might be something important in there, right? Message requests. So we get tagged as a private message. We check the message request and we see, oh, so-and-so has shared your post and tagged you in, in the sharing of it. And the more thoughtfully you can share the post, not just share, you know, click share, tag, and then go, but that's, you know, generic and no, you know, it's not very thoughtful. But if you could say, oh, you know, George Cow's work has blah, blah, blah. And this is why it resonates so much. Then I'm going to pay attention. I go, oh, this person is really nice. I'm not going to go ahead and say, hey, why don't you jump on a call, Zoom call together? Now, we're not at that level yet. But at least you have made your presence known to me. Again, when I say me, I mean, imagine this as any influence you're reaching out to. You've made the pre your presence known to me in a very thoughtful, nice way. At least I know your name at this point, or at least I've taken a quick look at your profile probably, or I'll, I'll click like or love for, for, the, for the share. Um, and if you do that several times, obviously now you're kind of a household name in my, in my, in my mind, right? Because, oh, this person, second or third or fourth share of mine that they've tagged me. And this is actually a, a, a good thing to know. When you do share someone's Instagram post, as a story, you might as well tag them because then they'll know that you shared it. There's now I'm gonna, everyone watching this is now going to send me a billion messages right now. Um, because otherwise, I do get a lot of people sharing my Instagram posts and they never tag me. So I don't know who shared what. On Facebook, it's different. When you share someone's Facebook post, they can at least see if you shared it publicly, that's fine. But on Instagram, you have to tag them, tag their Instagram URL, you know, Instagram handle. In order for, to, for them to, they'll get a private message. They'll see that you shared it. So once you share several of their posts and do it in a thoughtful way, you know, add a add a note, like add a paragraph, why you resonate so much, then you are essentially recognized in their mind whenever they see it. Oh, what a nice! That's the nice person. That's the nice fan who always shares shares my stuff. How cool is that? Great. Now, what did, now this, the next step is more, uh, the, the first step is easy, sharing their post. The second step is more tricky because what do you want to do now with that? The second step, you could say, well, I'm going to go ahead and invite them to a Zoom call. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't, I, I, I protect my time so well. I don't, say, I don't even do any exploratory calls anymore. I don't, if someone wants to hire me as a client, I don't even take clients anymore. Like I, I don't literally says you, you want to pay. No, I'm, I don't take one-on-one -on -one clients anymore, right? Which is what most influencers are. That's that's where they are at as well. So I don't do exploratory calls. Someone says, oh, I want to join your programs. No, I don't have time for exploratory. Come to my, buy a course, come to my Q&A. That's my exploratory call. Or rather all my videos that I pu post publicly for free. Those are my exploratory calls, right? That's how I gauge fit with people. You, you like my videos and you probably like my programs or come to a QA and a and then we'll interact that way. But so, so no, on just asking for a call for an influencer. I don't, I think that's too forward and that's too, that's rude. In my opinion, it's too forward. So um, instead, there's two strategies that I can think of. You either get introduced through a mutual friend that the influencer respects. Now, how do you know, right? You go to LinkedIn, you search that influencer and see if you have a mutual connection on LinkedIn or go to Facebook, find that influencer on Facebook and see if you have a mutual friend because that mutual friend can take this a long way to say, hey, so let's say, um, let's say, let's say Grant was trying to reach me and Grant and Mira are friends and Mira is a friend of mine too. And so Grant will, will go to Mira and say, hey, Mira, do you know George well enough 
um, I, I'm, I'm trying to connect with him more because I'm, maybe the collaboration or project. Would you, would you feel comfortable making the introduction? So through a mutual introduction is much better because I respect Mira. And so if Mira makes that introduction, I'm much more likely to say, well, I, for, for Mira's sake, I'm going to at least respond privately to this person and see how I can help. I might not join, jump on a Zoom call with you, maybe, maybe not, but at least through messaging, I can help you in some way or give you some guidance or, or share. You know. so, so then the question is, uh, whether you go through mutual introduction or not, the question is, what is your, what's, your, what's your pitch, I guess, or what's your invitation? What, why do you want their time? Right. Um, so now you might, what's not okay is to say like, okay, I, I, I just received this today, by the way, this is, this is a good example. Somebody that I actually do respect because I, I've, uh, I'm going to use names, fake names. Okay. These are not real, real people. Let's say Jane, Jane. Okay. Jane is trying to get me, George, to promote Jane's next program, next course. That's what's Jane's agenda. Jane wants that to happen. Jane wants me to promote Jane. Okay. Jane went through Tad Hargrave. Now I could use a real name because Tad, yeah. Tad is a friend of mine, a respected colleague. I, I love Tad so much. And Tad likes Jane a lot too. I actually have heard of Jane. Jane has done some work that publicly I've heard of and has heard good things about it. But Jane just approached me today and said, George, Tad is promoting my next course and thought that you might want to promote it too. Here's what Tad has to say about it and gave me a paragraph from Tad. Oh, Jane is wonderful, trusted colleague and friend. You can't go wrong promoting Jane's stuff. And I'm like, Jane, I like, I used to like you, not so much anymore. <laughs> don't, don't. Yeah. But it's like, Jane, your first message to me is to say, George, promote my thing. And here's why, because your mutual friend Tad says you should promote my thing. I was a little pissed by that because I'm like, what's in it? I mean, yeah, what's in it for me? Oh, commissions. You know, fine. That's fine. That, but I could promote anybody. I, there's so many people I could promote to get commissions. But every promotion slot costs me social capital, right? It, it costs me every time I send an email. This is true for anybody, right? And every time you send an email, you get unsubscribes. Right. Every time you promote something on social media, that's one less spot to promote your own thing or someone else's thing. Right. Every promotion costs. So you can't just say you're going to pay someone commission for this. That's not good enough. Now, what's good enough to say, Jane might have said, George, if you want to promote this, I'd be so grateful. I, I'd be happy to give you free access to it. That she didn't even say that. I'd be happy to give you free access to this thing. So you could take a look. You don't have to promote it, but at least have free access. You can see, you might learn something yourself or you might enjoy it. You might see how I do things. I'd be grateful for feedback, but just as a gift, don't have to even promote it. See, that's much more gracious. That's much more like, come on, you know, right? I, I just, I'm just so honestly surprised sometimes. It's like in real life, you wouldn't do this. How come it's okay to do it online? It's like, right? Anyway, so, so Jane, that's what Jane's message is like. Promote my thing, not try to say, say it in a nice way because Tad said so. Okay. All right. Not good enough. I'm not going to promote her. Now, um, I said very nicely back to Jane. I was a little bit surprised. I, I wrote back, very, oh, Jane, I've heard good things about your work. Um, this is not the right fit for me, uh, but maybe, maybe we'll be able to collaborate in some other way in the future. Now, what I hope Jane would write back would say, George, I've heard great things about you too. I, I'm at least look at my website or something. I would I would have wished Jane would have said, oh, great. I, look, I love your stuff too. And please let me know if there's something I can promote. Jane didn't say that. Jane just said, great. I'll keep you in mind for future projects. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, essentially, I'm like, now I know what kind of person Jane is and I'm going to stay away because it's not a gracious person. It's like always... Like the person's thinking of themselves and how can this person promote me and benefit me? But there's no, there's no, like, yeah, it's like if, if you want someone to be a friend or a promoter, you have to bend over backwards or not bend over backwards, like until it hurts, but you have to be so gracious 
you know, like to become a friend. And then maybe they'll promote you, maybe, right? So, so, so back to what, what should we say to an influencer? Ideally get introduced, but even getting introduced, what should, you, what should your pitch be? The pitch should be, like I said, something that the influencer goes, it doesn't cost me anything. I don't know who you are and you're giving me a gift. It should be that. And what should be the, the gift be? Now the gift isn't, here's my book for free. Now books are not good gifts, especially to, to busy people. Books are homework, okay? Courses are also, courses are a little bit more interesting to me because at least I can see, I'm more interested in seeing how they run the course because I can learn something from that. The course material may, may or may not be good. I, I'm, I've seen so many courses, I'm like, whatever. But how they run a program, that's more interesting to me. How they market something, that's more interesting to me because I can learn something from that. But so maybe not a gift like, hey, you don't know who I am. We're fine. We're introduced or not. Here's some homework for you. <laughs> Here's a book. Here's a course. No, no, don't, don't, don't do that. But the simplest gift, can I promote you to my audience? Can I interview you? Now, the larger your audience, the more it's an actual gift. Like if, you, if I check you out on Instagram and you have you know, 100 followers, you interviewing me is... Uh, it's uh, sometimes I say yes, sometimes I say no, because, you know, I have almost 8,000 followers. You have 100 followers. Is it a gift or is it more just a, I could spend my time doing other things, right? Now, if you have 800, if you have a tenth of my audience, 800 followers, okay, I'm a little bit more interested now. If you have half of my audience, oh, definitely. Sure. You can, you want to interview me? What? A, that's a gift. So, uh, you know, I... Um, and, but okay, so interviewing me is a gift, especially if I don't have to prepare anything. A lot, a lot of times you go, oh, hey, George, I want to interview you. Great. That sounds wonderful. And they give me all this homework. Like, please answer these 25 questions to help me. Like, this, this is just homework for me. I don't, this is a pain in the ass. Why would I, right? Like, you got to make it so easy for me. Like right now I'm running a summit. Okay. I made it so easy for my speakers. You don't have to promote this, the summit. And I'm going to ask you just a few basic questions. Like, I'm going to find your photo. I, you don't, I've, I've made this so easy for my, my summit speakers. Like, I'm just sitting back, and you're just going to ask me a few. And then you're even going to pay me? Yeah, I'm sharing the money with my summit. So, like, this is, I'm just giving you an example of how gracious you have to be to become business friends with somebody. You see what I mean? You, you, it's not that easy. So, like I said, you can interview me if you have a large enough audience. Or another interesting gift would be this. George, I'm doing some research that, that might interest you. I'm just going to ask you like two really simple questions and you could record your answer if it's easier, just you know, three minute recording or, or something like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to collate all the answers and I'm going to share it with you because you might be interested. Maybe it's some kind of industry research or just some, something that, I don't know, there's some kind of question that I believe you're interested in and you, you contribute to that. And not only am I going to share the answers with you, but I have also promote you as one of the people who gave an answer. And, and so some people call this um, a roundup post. You may have seen this uh, online. It's like uh, expert roundup, right? It's like, it's like you, you go to 12 different experts, you get, you, you get a quote from them each, and then you, you do a nice blog post with 12 different quotes. I mean, that's one way, that's a very basic research, but it might be more in-depth research where you're like, I'm going to ask you for a quote, or I'm going to ask you a question that you can quickly respond to. Again, it's going to take you five minutes. And I'm going to do a bunch of other research, a bunch of other legwork that you don't have to do on a question that you're... Now that's interesting to me. It's like, oh, okay. And what's even more interesting is if you said, I'm going to sell the answers. Uh, it, it's going to be a product. And you don't have to pay for the product because you gave, you know, you gave your, your part of it. So I'm going to give you the product for free. Cool. Right. So one, um, yeah. So anyway, I just, just a couple of, I, this has gone a bit longer than I expected, but I, as you can tell, it's a bit of a soapbox for me because I get these kinds of messages too often. And I'm like, people wouldn't walk up to you in real life. Right. And go, you don't know who I am but I want you to buy me dinner. That's essentially what you're asking someone. Or you have no idea who I am, but I'd like half an hour of your time. Like you wouldn't do that in real life. 
why are we doing that in, online? It doesn't make any sense. People just don't have that connect. Like it's the same thing as real life. Like in um, real life, you want to become someone's friend. You, you have to be super gracious too, right? You have to be like, find creative ways to invite them to something that they really want. So think about that. And um, yeah, so, I, so in other words, I don't think some really well-worded message of synchronicity cuts it anymore, especially the larger the influencer the less that matters because they get, imagine them getting three of those amazing, you know, we were born on the same day in the same town. And <laughs> we have, we have our, you know, our, our sisters have the same name, uh, whatever. And, and I've done, I've done these three, I, I might have the exact same educational background. doesn't matter. I have the same interests. We have, we also like this obscure band or, or we have this obscure teacher. We both like none of that. All those synchronicities you can mention. I'm getting three of those messages every week. So, so you have to think more creatively beyond that to say, how can I be, how can I be gracious beyond this? And I'll tell you, it's not. So last thing I'll say about this is it's because nobody else is gracious. If you are a little bit gracious, it goes a long way and you really are special. In other words, people invite me to interviews all the time. So that's already more gracious than can I have some of your time? But if if the interview was more interesting, like like they have a sizable audience, doesn't have to be bigger than mine, even if it's half the size of mine, or even a third of the size of mine, great. Even a quarter of the size of mine. I'm like, okay, fine. A tenth of the size, maybe, right? But if the interview also was on something where I'm not just regurgitating the same thing I say in every interview, that's much more interesting too, right? Like, George, I would like to interview you about your spiritual path, right? Like, like Leia did that, right? Like Leia, Leia's here on the live call. I, I would love to talk about that. Like, I never talk about, like, if you're going to interview me about what, what is marketing, what's authentic business, I'm fine with that. If you have a large enough audience, I'm promoting myself, great. If you have a small audience, I don't want to talk the same thing ever, you know, you know, the, the, you know, 12th interview I'd done, you know, in the last quarter or something, it's kind of gets boring. It's like, George, I want to, I want to talk to you about your, your dog, buddy. <laughs> it's okay. All right. It's time to stop. No, that's not a great example, but like, yeah, the spirituality thing was interesting or um, politics, right? Like I have some strong opinions about that stuff. No one ever asked me about it. And so that's a bit more interesting. So yeah, like find some kind of angle that you think, wow, that person probably would love to talk about it. No one asked them about it. Um, yeah, so I hope this is helpful and I look forward to seeing if you have any other ideas or questions below. Yeah, and I just wanna say, I, peer, I appreciate the, the, the chats here. Um, thanks to Nam and Mira and Leah um, and uh, Liz and Grant uh, and others. Um, Mira said, uh, it's counterculture. You know, we, we have to practice graciousness to resist the pressure towards selfishness that we're all under. I agree. Building a business is not easy, of course, as you've noticed. And it's so easy for us, myself included, okay, to just reach out. And there, there, are, some, there are some influencers like Gary Vaynerchuk who are spreading, I think, a wrong message to say, just DM a thousand people and you'll get, you know, 10 people saying yes. It's terrible, terrible message because you're DM, direct message. Basically, people like Gary are saying, just send a private message to a thousand influencers and maybe 10 of them will say yes to promoting you. I'm like, you've just, you have just set, set up a, um, a poor relationship or the beginning of one with 990 other people. Like, why would you do that? And plus, it's painful to, to, to painful to message even five people and not hear back let alone a hundred or a thousand. Are you crazy? Like what a painful task that is. Why, why, why would you do that? But instead, if you take a moment, and I know it's, I, I'm speaking to myself too, because I have the tendency to like message and influence, hey, can we interview each other? Like maybe, maybe not, you know? So I have to slow down too and go, instead of messaging 10 people, if I graciously message one person, that is better for number one, for the relationship and better for my spirit too, for my, 
how my day was because I, I thoughtfully I thoughtfully messaged Grant, you know, like thoughtfully instead of I have half an hour, I'm going to message, you know, five people in the half hour, like just, hey, want to interview me or can I interview we, each other, you know, take half hour, you know, think about Grant and really go into Grant's world and say, what can I say that is gracious? Like, what can I do? And that's a, that's just a, being a, being the gracious human being that you normally are when you take yourself away from the pressure of networking or, you know, building the business or whatever it is and go, I'm net caring. I'm net caring. I'm really connecting with one person at a time. And they, they may not write back, but at least I've practiced compassion. I've practiced graciousness. And isn't that itself worthwhile as a human being to do? instead of practicing the hustle and grind of sending out messages to 10 people in half an hour, you know? So it's part of the personal growth uh, benefit as well.